In this video, we're going to build a Next.js app and we're going to Dockerize it. And if you don't know what Next.js is, it's the React framework and it's super awesome. You can see it on my screen behind me. And then also, if you're not aware of what Docker is, Docker allows you to run your apps anywhere. You can deploy it to an app service on DigitalOcean. You could deploy it to a Kubernetes cluster on Sivo. You can do so many things. So Dockerizing your app allows it to run on different platforms. You can even send the container to your friends to use and they could run one container for development or they could run 100 containers to run it in production environment. It's super exciting. Let's just get started. But before we do, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe below if you haven't already. It really helps support the channel and it costs you nothing. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Next.js app. It's a full stack app, but we're just going to use it as an example. And I'm really keen to show you how you can Dockerize a full stack app. And then you can add Tailwind or any other UI component that you want. So let's just say MPX create next app and we're going to use the latest version. If we hit enter, it's going to take us through a series of questions. What's the project name? My app is fine. And then it's going to download the dependencies, you know, the React dependencies and other dependencies that it needs. And a server side rendering that you can do with Next.js, there's so many amazing features. It's asking me for a password now because I signed my commits and what it's going to do is going to do our first commit. So now we've got the repo. And if we navigate into the app called My App, we'll have our first git commit log message, which was the initial commit from the create Next.js app. So that's why I had to put my password. You probably won't need to. So the next thing I always recommend people doing is let's start the app. So let's do npm run dev and you'll see the app running. Actually, if I can cancel that for one second and I you know, show you localhost 3000, nothing is running at the moment. So if, when I start the app, npm run dev and I actually now load localhost 3000, we get to see the page that Next.js gives us and you can go into the code and change this. So what I actually want to do is stop that and I want that to be running from a Docker container. So make sure you have Docker running so I can check now. You can see I have Mongo running, which we're not going to use for this app, but there are other containers that you can have running. So let's clear that and let's start again. So the next thing you want to do is probably open VS Code. So now we've got VS Code here and you'll see from the amazing uh, Next.js docs, pages is where you put your pages and then the routing will be done automatically for you. And same with the API as well. And look at the Eddie Hub link free project. It's a great example of this on how to have even dynamic pages and dynamic URLs and connecting to a Mongo database. And there's loads of contributions you can do. We have so many good first issues, which are really going to show you how you can really level up with your contribution. So go check that out. But the thing I want to do now is Dockerize it. I'm going to show you how straightforward it is. So we've got our app running. We're going to create a new file and we're going to call it a Docker file. No surprises there. The first thing we want to do in the Docker file is say where we want to use as a base image. So we're going to say it's going to be from node and we're going to say version 16 because that's the LTS at the moment. Next, we want to choose our working directory within the container. I usually use user source app. People use a variety of things. I don't think it matters too much. And the next thing we want to do is copy the files from outside the container into the container. And then we want to run the command, which you guessed it, it's going to be npm install. When we ran the npx create next.js app, we didn't have to do this because it ran it for us just before it did the commit as well. But don't worry, they're ignored so they weren't committed to the code. So we'll do npm install. And I'm probably going to do a production build. This is going to be more for deployment rather than development. And also, I say ignore scripts because it's a production build. Depending on your code base, I don't know if you need it, we can leave it off for now. There are other flags that you might need to use and tweak. The last thing we want to do is run the build. So we can do npm run build. We're not going to do npm run dev because that's for development. We want to run the build. And then the last command is command and we specify the commands that we want. So we want npm and we want run. So this is going to be the last one we run in the Docker file. So it's going to be how it creates the container. There are optimizations for those of you who are thinking, oh, you can do this. And yes, you can do various improvements to optimize this further because Docker files are kind of made up of layers and each layer is cached. So what we could do here is rather than copy everything, we could copy the, the package JSON files, both of them with the lock. And then that creates a cache layer that we can reuse next time for a lot more speed. But I don't want to get into too much of the details. I really want to kind of get you the, the app working in Docker, show you how to get it running. And then and you can optimize later. I find we optimize way too often. You know, we're trying to write an SQL query or Mongo query or whatever it is, and we're trying to optimize it, but it doesn't work yet. Let's get it working, then you can optimize later. Leave a comment below and let me know what optimizations you have in mind as well. So now that's saved, let's go back to the terminal 
and we can run a couple of commands. So the first thing we're going to want to do is run docker build and the target is going to be, I'll just call it next.js video and then it's going to be in this directory. So let's build the container that will take a moment. And this is where the caching layers would really help. If you use them with layers that didn't change, it would use a lot more of the cache second, third, fourth time round. Obviously not the, the first time round, but it's still pretty quick. It's probably going to be about 30 seconds. We're running up to 19 seconds now. So hopefully I guess pretty right. I should have checked before the RX started recording the video. 24 seconds. Okay, it came even, even faster. Awesome. And that wasn't cached, although it does say cached. Oh no, cached isn't it? It's caching it. Okay, so next thing we want to do is get it running because if I go docker ps again um, to show us what's running, there's still just the Mongo one from before. So if I clear that, now we actually want to get it running. So we could go docker run and we pass it the two flags. So D is a demon and then port. We want to uh, go from 3000 externally to 3000 internally. You might do that differently when deploying to a platform. You might do port 80, for example, and then we're just going to call it Next.js video. So now you can see it's not running and we've got an error. So let's just check what we did. I did npm run. It should be npm start. So those of you who are shouting at the screen, well done. You're completely right. So all we have to do again, we go through the history and we're not going to run it. We're going to need to build it again. So let's do the build command. And a lot of its cache is going to be a lot faster. I bet you it's faster than 24 seconds. Oh, it's going to be very, very quick and very close. The last step took a little bit longer because it's actually building and running the, the project. And so now if we go up through our history again, and we're going to try and run it again. Now this time it should work. So let's have a look, docker ps. And we can see it is running. We can see it's running next.js video uh, and it is running on port 3000. So let's go back to the browser that wasn't working before um, after we stopped the app and let's run it again. You can see it's running, but you probably don't believe me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ID of that and we're going to say stop the container and I'm going to refresh this and you're going to see that it doesn't work. So you can see it's actually not running. And so if I change the stop to a start and we get the container up and running again, you can see it's back up and running. So it is running from the container and we could always tell the logs of the container and see the requests come in. But that's how you dockerize a Next.js full stack application, which I think is pretty awesome. And there isn't that many lines to it. Yes, when you optimize it, it might double, but again, it doesn't look very hard. It doesn't look very complicated. Let me know what you think and what apps you could dockerize. I and mean, it's a great contribution to make to open source projects. You could raise an issue and ask, do you want your project dockerized and then you could dockerize it for them. It's a great way to get into DevOps. There is just so many ways that you can help projects get started. I mean, building this on a GitHub action to show that the build also works as well. So even if they have got a Docker file in the project and it is being containerized, it is there, but is it being containerized every time this file changes? So one contribution you could make is put a GitHub action to run the commands, make sure it builds the container. But then you probably don't want to run the container every time there's a code change, maybe only when there's a Docker file change. So there's an optimization you could make there on your contribution or on someone else's contribution if they've got that already there on their project. There's always improvements to be made. You just need to have a look. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe below and join the Eddie Hub Discord. Let's collaborate on open source between videos and live streams. I'll see you in Discord.